no matter what size your home lab is, you're using electricity and that's generating heat. So I'm gonna show you how I went about reusing some of that heat inside my house to warm up the house and also, interestingly enough, cool down the garage. So let's take a look at how many watts right now I'm using on these systems. So on the JBOD systems over here, we can see that I'm using right about 1.5 kilowatts right now. And on the compute units over here, I'm using right about 0.8 kilowatts, 0.7 kilowatts right now. So that is quite a bit of wattage that's being utilized. However, it's just waste heat at this moment. And we're gonna go through how I made use of that waste heat to heat the house and also how the house's coolness is now cooling the data center. Nice little garage setup that I've got going on here. And you can see up here, what is the key? Now I've tried this a couple of different ways. I tried this first with no fans, just opening the door here and you can kind of see the pathway in there that leads to the rest of the house. And that did not work out. There was not enough natural force of the air to actually cool it down and to mix the airflow between the two areas. I next tried putting the fans on the ground. So I had the fans, I put them down on the ground and I just had them blowing like that. And I had one here and I had this one over here just sitting on the ground there blowing in that direction. I did not actually see any cooling whatsoever from that. So when I tried that on the ground, I did feel something that was weird and it reminded me of a natural force that I probably was ignoring and what I was trying to do that is the key to getting this right and that is convection. So up here, I've got hot air. Down here, I have cold air. This is something we've all learned in science class, but this is the critical component of locating your forced air convection system. So by utilizing the rack up here and just a couple of zip ties up here that are holding the handles, and these are not super expensive fans. Check the links below and I'll find some if you're interested in supporting the channel and using those affiliate links. I always appreciate that. But you can see here, this is just a very low tech setup. It literally is the door open, propped open with a paint can, and I've got the air being pushed out this way. I had contemplated a lot of different setups and potentials, even things like cutting into the insulation and the ductwork and actually trying to force the air in there. I decided not to do that because I like creating holes in the house, but creating holes in your ductwork is a completely different bag of worms. I didn't think that, that was a good idea. So this has dropped the temperature. How much might be your question? If we look here at the average, about four hours ago, we were hanging at 31C. Still at that, right about three hours ago, that was right around the time that I made this change. You can see the temperatures drop here over the next hour down to 27C average, and finally coming to a resting point at 25C. So that is a six degree centigrade drop, and that is definitely something that I think is worthwhile to look into for your home lab. Six degrees centigrade in here. That is an awful lot. Now, I do have a decent airflow channel here. So if you look here, I've got the back of the servers here. So air naturally is hot exhausting out here. And as a result of this air exhausting out here, it can kind of pull up and go that direction very easily. Let's take a look here at how I mounted this one. So this fan, and this is probably not 100% approved so far, uh, nobody's seen it yet that is going to say anything about it, but I drilled two holes up here in the handle and I just used a really small drill bit to do that. And I got a zip tie and I put that on up here and I drilled in an eye hook right above here. That might not be met with a lot of uh, approval at some point in the near future, but that's all I did. And literally this here is a super duper low tech setup but it is working out really, really good. So literally all it took was a few minutes for me to get the house much warmer and the data center much cooler. I think this is a perfect example of a low tech win. And if you're generating heat in a part of your house, maybe your garage, maybe your basement, maybe a separate room, don't discount that you probably, if you're thinking about moving some of that heat to other parts of the house, need to consider convection, placing your fans up high, and that way you can actually get really good forced air convection, moving the air the right direction, and that should get you a system that actually works. Low tech wins are sometimes the best wins. This one, really quick, 
and really effective. Now, it's Texas, so this probably won't stay a viable option for an incredibly long amount of time, but if you are in a part of the world where it's colder than this, this could actually be a significant cost savings for you on your typical heating and cooling bill from your household HVAC system. Let me know what you think. Uh, have you tried anything like this? What have you tried out so far? Did you go into the attic? Did you just do jumper ducts? I know that that's a very popular one is the jumper ducts and then forced air from the top of the rear of a rack system, pushing it into the house. Or have you tried just opening the doors? Has that worked for you? It didn't work for me. And I thought that that was kind of surprising. And so being able to reuse some of this heat and save some of that money on cooling is a win-win in my situation. I hope it is for you too. Sign up. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Everybody have a great rest of your day and we'll see you guys next time.